Hello everyone, you are welcome to clip 3 of part 5. Um, we have already discussed the CDMA in greater details in part uh, in clip 2. Now in clip 3, we uh, come to one of the most important new modulation and multiple access techniques, which is named as orthogonal frequency division multiplexing OFDM. Why this OFDM is so important and why it has replaced CDMA in many modern communication systems? This is what we are going to answer in this clip. Okay. So we saw before uh, in, in, in part uh, uh, of the wireless communication, of wireless channel, so in part three, I think. So it, uh, we discussed uh, some limitations uh, and the challenges of wireless channels, of wireless channels, uh, uh, such as uh, the ice eye problem, the fading problems, and so on. And uh, also, uh, we saw uh, in this part that CDMA can handle some of uh, these problems through the RIC receiver. However, CDMA, uh, if we want to send at much higher uh, symbol rate, uh, and we need to make the spreading of our wider band, then we will need very wide band, which is sometimes is not uh, possible to achieve. Also, uh, using very high uh, bit rate or very high symbol rate, I'm, I'm talking uh, about when we come to hundreds of megabit per second, um, the RIC receiver can be uh, like uh, complex to achieve uh, and it, it, it might need uh, uh, like high uh, computational power also uh, uh, equalizers on the chip level they are uh, like uh, very costly and uh, then um, we have problems in the CDMA in order to achieve very high uh, symbol rate or very high data rates when data rates comes to the levels of hundreds of megabit per second and uh, uh, of course it is possible to use CDMA like multi-carrier CDMA but again uh, the, the receiver uh, cost will be high so uh, the replacement of that it was the OFDM what is OFDM and how it works and why it was not known long time ago because OFDM if we check the the uh, recent uh, like uh, systems we we will we will see that they they started like with the wi-fi uh, i think it was uh, 802.11a uh, and uh, it was maybe around uh, 15 20 years ago so it was not very very like uh, like very old system so it was not implemented like in 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 uh, uh, second generation mobile networks uh, nor third generation it has been applied starting from the fourth generation let us try to find the the reasons for that okay Okay, I, 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 I talked about this, about uh, the symbol rate and the intersymbol interference. So uh, simply that we will have intersymbol interference clear or the frequency selective fading once we have the symbol rate is uh, much higher than the, the uh, fre coherence frequency of, of the channel. Okay, um, how to handle this? Just intuitive answer, it can be that by breaking down our symbol rate to lower rate and then sending every subband we call it as a subband of our orthogonal frequency so this is the 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 intuitive way to answer or to handle this problem and this should be easy to do okay so uh, actually it is called multi-carrier transmission so uh, it, it, it was known long time ago but it was not implemented and let us see why first this is the multi-carrier frequency division multiple axis it is not of dm okay so this is the multi-carrier frequency division multiple axis realization so uh, what i will do here we have like symbol rate or bit rate with a rate of 3 fs 
let's say it was like three mega symbol per second or three megabit per second. And now I convert from parallel to serial. So now I have serial. So for example, I take F0, then F3, then F6 and so on. And th this one will be A1 and after that A4. So I divide from serial to parallel. So you can see here the, 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 the bit rate or the symbol rate over each branch will be third of the original rate. So if the original rate was 3 megabit per second, every branch the rate will be 1 megabit per second. Of course, we can divide it over many, many more. For example, if you divide it from serial to parallel to 1000, okay, and you have here 1 megabit per second, and you have 1000 serial to parallel, then uh, every branch will have only 1 kilobit per second. And this can manage very well in, in wireless channel, 1 kilobit per second. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, that we, we should be able to collect them again as, as shown in the receiver in this part. This is this this is the receiver. And I should be able to collect them, collect them, and using parallel to serial, then I get the original the original rate of of uh, one megabit per second. So here we have one megabit per second. At the receiver we will have one megabit per second. But over the channel I will have like one thousand subband. Each subband is only one kilo bit per second, which can mitigate the problem of the ISI and the problem of the frequency selective fading, and it can handle these problems. But the question, why this system was not applied before? Let us see, to answer this question, and this is the reason that I bought only three like uh, 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 subbands to make the analysis easy. And uh, sorry that I will use some math again. I will try to touch the math without going in details. But uh, again, uh, try do your best to follow uh, my, explana my explanation for the math. But if you find difficulties uh, uh, about some terms, ignore them and try to catch the major concept. Okay, now you can see that I have, uh, I multiply the first subband with cosine 2 by F1t plus theta 1. The second one cosine 2 by F2t plus theta 2. The, the, the third one cosine 2 by F3 plus theta 3. F1, F2, F3, this is what I designed. So I bought F1 and F2 and F3. Theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 is out of my control because that theta is the 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 drift in the um, in the uh, local oscillator that if the local oscillator i cannot control them to start with this exactly in the same phase this is out of control in the brief, in the old systems as it is shown here so theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 is out of my control it is a random phase introduced in each in each cosine but f1 f2 f3 I, I design the system now, I want to see how much I should separate between F1 up to F2 up to F3 in order to be able to uh, 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 receive all these subbands again without interference. So in other words, I want F1 and F2 and F3 to be orthogonal to each other. They, sh they must be orthogonal with this data. So in that sense, I can carry them, all of them, over the same channel, over the same line, in the receiver part, I can separate them easily, and I can, uh, like, uh, 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 replicate or, or uh, um, retrieve the original signal it was transmitted in that transmitter. Okay, so the, the, the question is that, what is if I and if K, where I does not equal to K, to make the multiplication equal to zero? Uh, if I and if K that I design, I know those frequencies. Theta I and theta K are phases. They are uh, like introduced by each local oscillator and I cannot control them. So th those are out of my control. This is the difference in the phases between two different signals. Okay. And I want them to be zero. If I equal to K, it means that with the same frequency, I want it to be A or to be one. So it, it can be any number. So we, when it is one, we call it as orthonormal, like uh, cosine. And if it is uh, some number uh, different than one, then it can be like like orthogonal, but not not necessarily orthonormal. So here we we assume that they, we want them a equal to one. 
Okay. Uh, uh, next, we have some mathematical uh, derivations or manipulations. They are uh, like high math uh, calculus. Uh, nothing special here. So just uh, we multiply two cosine, and then we know that the multiplication of cosine can be like addition of cosine and subtraction of cosine. And then we take the integration and make some simple manipulations here. And then I want this equal to zero. And in order to have this equal to zero, I have this condition now of course if theta i is the same as theta k then this will be zero by by the by by default but unfortunately i cannot make theta i equal to theta k as i said because theta is some random phase introduced in each local oscillator so in order to to get this equal to zero for i does not equal to j i need this one to be the same as this one so this could be achieved if this value is multiple of 2 by as it as it is seen here so this will be uh, the same as theta i minus theta k in case that if i minus if i uh, uh, minus 1 or if i minus f k as it is shown here is the same as 1 over t s this is the minimum actually it can be more of course it can be 2 over t s or 3 over t s but of course i am looking for the minimum a space in a frequency in order to keep those are orthogonal. Okay, so this is the answer actually that I need the the separation between each carrier and to the next carrier is the same as the bit rate over the subband the sub, sub the subband bit rate as as I said if I have the original one is has three megabit per second. And here I have here one mega, here one mega, here and one mega. So in this res this result shows to me that the separation in the carrier should be at least one mega. For example, if you use the first frequency equal to ten megahertz, then what is the se the second one? It cannot be less than ten mega to eleven megahertz because the separation should be at least 1 over TS. Of course, it can be 12, but 12 is, is not good because you, you will waste more of bandwidth. I don't want, I want to keep the bandwidth. F3, okay, you can add another 1 mega, for example, it can be 12 megahertz, and so on. So we can add every time 1 megahertz, assuming that this is the minimum that I, I want to use in this system. Okay, so but but how uh, 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 the idea here is the total bandwidth required will be three megahertz. Okay, now uh, after modulation, of course, as you can see here, you can see it here. So here we 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 uh, break down this frequency into some the subbands. Here we we, we assume also the double side band actually. We assume the double side band, so we assume that the original bit rate was not even one mega, it was 500 kilobit per second. But because uh, when we multiply in the cosine, they will be it will take one mega hertz bandwidth. Okay, so this is from serial to parallel. So I divide them into parallel subbands, and now this is the required bandwidth that for to, to carry this multi carrier frequency division multiple access, it should be this way. So this is the first. And this is the second, and this is the third subband. So the total, actually, the total bandwidth was 3fs over 2. Here, the total bandwidth is 5fs divided by 2. Actually, if in general, if we need, uh, if the original is in fs, the original bandwidth, if, then what we need using multi carrier frequency division multiple, multiple access is 2n minus 1 times fs. Uh, and remember that in multi-carrier or in this um, uh, 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 like serial to parallel, usually the number of parallel uh, subbands can be very high, can be 100, can be uh, 200, can be 1000. So now the bandwidth will be multiplied by 2. It is very large bandwidth. So it, it is it, it is wasting of the bandwidth. So this is actually one major reason why multi-carrier frequency division multiple multi, multiplexing or multiple access was not used long time ago. Even the technology was available at the time for this one, but it was not used because 
of the uh, the wasting of the bandwidth okay so uh, uh, now we have a new technology actually when the development of this uh, v v VLSI very large scale into integrated circuits and they were they were able to implement the process of fast Fourier transform and inverse fast Fourier transform it was possible to implement them in like in in cheap and, and uh, or in inexpensive uh, uh, integrated circuit okay after the de development of this FFT and IFFT, it was possible to generate those orthogonality, okay, with the same phase. I, I, let me go back to the to this figure. Sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, this phase because we have like different local oscillators, and because uh, even I can set the frequency for e each local oscillator, but every one it will generate certain certain uh, phase random phase that we, we don't know we cannot control this will like destroy the orthogonality and in order to have orthogonal system i need to keep the bandwidth between each carrier and the next carrier to be the total bandwidth of the signal after shifting so if 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 the uh, uh, the 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 total shift uh, uh, or the total bandwidth of the signal after shifting is one mega, so we need to keep one megahertz bandwidth between each two. If the bandwidth the the uh, 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 like before shifting it was one megahertz, then I will need here two megahertz of the bandwidth in order to have uh, uh, like uh, orthogonal signal. Okay, um, when we use the FFT operation, FFT is fast Fourier transform, or IFFT is the inverse fast Fourier transform. So this is a, a one of the transforms which used this, um, uh, or it is uh, like optimized way to get the the Fourier transform, the discrete Fourier transform. It can be optimized optimizing by using the fast Fourier uh, transform and it is orthogonal process but the, the, the good thing with this orthogonal process that it will it, it, uh, the process will be based on the same local oscillator and it, the, all of them they will have the same theta so the phase will not be like introduced randomly anymore okay once the phase is not included uh, or involved randomly anymore so what happened how this will will affect let us go to this equation. Okay. Now assume that theta i is the same as theta k. So theta i minus theta k is zero. Sine zero is zero. And this is theta i minus theta k is zero. Okay. What we will have? We will have sine two by f i minus f k times t s. Okay. Now to have this equal to zero, actually I need the difference to be f i minus f k. I need it to be only 1 divided by 2 TS, half of the TS, not 1 over TS. What that mean? It means that I can save the bandwidth. Actually, the generated bandwidth will be the same as the original bandwidth, as I can see, or we can see in the, in the figure. Yes, of course, in the multi in, in the multi carrier FDMA, actually we need also to add some ground band, which which makes it even worse. But with the off DM, because we use fast Fourier transform and inverse fast Fourier transform, and they are by default orthogonal. All the uh, like uh, sub bands are orthogonal. Then we can keep it like uh, TS over two and. Uh, 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 the, the, or 1 over Ts divided by 2, which means that this will be the generated band. So uh, even they are interfering each other in the frequency band, but still we are able to separate them by using the inverse fast Fourier transform or uh, uh, depends on which one we used before. Okay. This process can be done as this symbol of the M transmitter. But again, before I come to this transmitter, uh, if one asks why it was not applied before this FFT, as we said that this FFT integrated circuit and IFFT integrated circuit was uh, it, it has been realized or uh, coming to the commercial level uh, uh, only recently, within like uh, 15 or 20 years ago. Before that, it was uh, not, not possible to do it. Even the concept of FFT and IFFT was there since 60s. 
since 60s the, the 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 concept is known but but to realize it with the, like uh, um, commercially to be valid valid or useful commercially not very expensive it was only recently so this is the actually the symbol of the m transmitter so we have the bit stream with rate rb now we have just follow me step by step so we don't have math next so but we uh, we just see how it works now so we have the bit stream with rate rb let's say you have data rate let's say maybe or oh, 10 megabit per second or 10 mega symbol here let us talk about bits so we have 10 mega bit per second and now we have serial to parallel converter so i assume that uh, i convert this to 1000 parallel so if we have here 10 mega bit per second so in each sub band i will have 10 mega divided by 1000 which means that it can be about uh, uh, 10 uh, or 100 kilobit per second yes uh, actually it will be 10 kilobit per second if it is 1000 yes 10 kilobit per second yeah, if it is 100, it will be 100 kilobit per second, but it's 10 kilobit per second, which means that it has quite or very narrow subband. Okay, now we have 10 kilobit per second, 10 kilobit per second, 10 kilobit per second for 1000 times until we have the last one, which is 1000 subband. Those are called, called subbands. Let me now skip this, this, this block for a while and come to this multi carrier orthogonal modulation using IFFT. This operation is exactly the same as we did in when we multiply them in cosine. But there, in the multi-carrier uh, FDMA, we were multiplying cosine F1, cosine F2, cosine F3. Now we don't multiply them in cosine. We multiply them in like complex, actually, sinusoid, which is the, 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 the uh, nucleo or the, the core of this IFFT operation. Okay, so it is, it, uh, all of them will be the same on, uh, over the same phase. So we don't have the problem of the phase, uh, still the phase differences, but still they are orthogonal to each other. What will be the generated here? The generated output, it will be like, like uh, um, um, interfered bathes, or interfered uh, subbands of the, those all 1000 together, but they are orthogonal. They are orthogonal to each other. Okay. Then we have the cyclic prefix. Actually, why we use the cyclic prefix? Uh, we mentioned in the ISI that we have the problem of intersymbol interference. Okay. Now, when we reduce the 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 frequency, uh, the the, the subband, uh, the ISI problem will be reduced but not solve it 100%. So what we'll do here, we we add little prefix in the time so that we can handle if we have some little intersymbol interference happened after this uh, uh, subbands, after this uh, reduction, big reduction in the bandwidth, but still if we have some like uh, uh, ice eye, this ice eye could be handled by using very simple equalizer and also by adding this prefix as we will see uh, in, in, in more details later. After that, we have the parallel to serial uh, uh, converter because we have parallel here, so we convert them to serial and then we have the RF modulator, then we send the signal. Uh, let us come back to this to this part. Actually, this part is that it is some some advanced block. It can be added or not to the of the M. Uh, it means that um, when we send many subbands together, some subbands might have a, a like very good channel. Some other bands might have like destructive fading. Some other bands might have constructive fading or good channel and bad channel. This is this is like random random in the sorry in the channel as as we saw before. Okay, so in case that some sub band has excellent has seen excellent channel, so we can get benefit of that by sending more bits. Uh, over that subband. So in that case, we can use, for example, quadrature phase shift king or 16 quam or even higher, higher number of bits 
for that sub band for some other sub band uh, the, the channel is bad so we can't reduce the number of bits but how can we know which which sub band uh, like uh, faced uh, good channel or bad channel this could be done by looking to the feedback channel comes from the receiver so the receiver they will check each sub band so those sub bands which are very good then they can send them uh, like in the back uh, channel or feedback channel to inform the transmitter of course this is not like uh, uh, efficient way because in, if you want for every sub band you, you, you it is called carrier state information or oh, sorry channel state information csi so channel state information means that the state of that sub channel uh, it, it is not uh, like possible or it is not efficient to send uh, channel state information about every sub channel um, so uh, in the practice they can send this CSI over um, like every group of channels group of that close to each other channels we can send that channel state information to the transmitter in order to like like to increase the number of bits per symbol that it can be sent over that sub band but in but anyhow this block is like a uh, like extra group of uh, a block it can be omitted and we have the same the symbol of the m uh, transmitter so this is the concept of the uh, of the m uh, transmitter and the heart of this transmitter is this part the part of the IFFT of course you can use FFT and the IFFT on the other side it is almost the same the same operation done okay uh, i will not go to the math uh, uh, about how to make this fft and i50 and let us see uh, now this is the explanation the slide is that you can read how to use the uh, or how to work the transmitter but now let me just come to the, the, the cyclic prefix as, as i said the cyclic prefix is is some time as you can see that we keep it like uh, um, uh, for for uh, possibility of other um, uh, like symbols to come within that time because when you send the first symbol there might be other symbol come within that time so uh, we keep this 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 symbol as uh, 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 that uh, uh, not useful so we don't put information our our major information here so the correlator window is only over this T where we, I have my symbol here, but this extra symbol before the, uh, this is like guard time before the second symbol. So this is symbol one, this is symbol two. We keep in between of them this guard time, but we don't leave this guard time free of, of, of sending anything. Actually, we take part of the signal and we put it here in order to keep the orthogonality. In order to keep the orthogonality between subbands, we 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 bought part of it. It is it could it's like cyclic cyclic prefix. So we bought some some part from this one, and we bought it in that in that uh, uh, time, uh, which is left for for the uh, reduction of the ISI inter symbol interference and also inter carrier interference. More explanation explanation is given is given here. Okay, uh, actually the receiver is doing the inverse operation of the transmitter, as we know. So we have in the OFDM receiver, we have the RF demodulator. Then, of course, we have from serial to parallel. So we convert the signal from serial to parallel again. Here, we make the cyclic prefix removal. And we remove the cyclic prefix. And, of course, we kept the orthogonality between them. And then we use this uh, multi-carrier demodulation by using FFT. If I use IFFT in the transmitter, I should use FFT in the receiver. If I used FFT in the transmitter, I should use IFFT there in the receiver. So it is the inverse operation. The inverse operation, it makes the signal to its original form, but, but it will be still in parallel as you can see here. Now we, we, we make the baseband demodulation we have the equalization here. We have the subband channel estimation, so we can send some the, the 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 channel state information back to the transmitter if needed. Okay. After that, we have barrel to serial com, uh, converter, and then we have our original signal. So this is actually the concept of OFDM. In OFDM, we take the signal which has very wide bandwidth, very high bandwidth which means that very high data rate we convert for that we break down this very high data rate by using serial to parallel converter 
then we reduce that we call everyone as a sub band we send over sub band over some orthogonal like uh, uh, signals we generated by the EFT or IFT then I take them again to have them from serial from parallel to serial we send them in the receiver we make the the uh, like uh, inverse operation until we got the original signal again okay so this is the concept actually of uh, 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 of of the m and uh, let me stop here and the last uh, clip it will be about the uh, space time frequency coding and we will talk about also the non orthogonal multiple access which is applied in 5g networks and uh, we will review some few uh, like uh, structures of the radio receivers in general thank you very much and see you in the next clip thanks <laughs>